Hello, nice to meet you again. If you open YouTube and search for hydraulic press, you will find countless videos about a machine that can compress or destroy almost anything. You put under the machine everything from wood, stone, concrete, steel, to titanium, diamonds, and even a Nokia 3310. So what is a hydraulic press and why can it destroy the world? Hydraulic compressors are essentially just one of countless applications of hydraulic technology. You usually don't have a hydraulic compressor in your home, but I'm sure nearly every home has at least one. Don't believe it, a child's water gun is a simple hydraulic device. Disc brake assemblies of motorbikes and cars are hydraulic devices. The door closer used to open and close automatic doors is also a hydraulic system. A little bigger, we have hydraulic jacks, hydraulic lifters, power steering systems on trucks, and shock absorbers of cars and motorbikes that also operate on hydraulics. A little bigger, and we have excavators, bulldozers, cranes, and trash compactors. All also operate based on hydraulic mechanisms. Basically, the hydraulic system operates on the Pascal principle, which states that the pressure on a liquid contained in a closed vessel is transmitted equally to every point of that liquid. The reason the pressure transfer has almost no loss is because the liquid has almost incompressible properties. The liquid and solid particles lie very close together, meaning there is no space left for them to get any closer together. A minimum hydraulic system requires two pistons, an a piston, where pressure is applied, and a B piston, where pressure is transmitted through a hydraulic fluid. Usually all and water can also be used to make hydraulic fluid, but water corrodes metals, making it easy for bacteria to grow, volatile and easily polluted. Water also does not have good lubricating properties like oil, has a very low viscosity, nearly 50 times lower than oil. Therefore, it is much easier to leak. Returning to our hydraulic system, pressure is equal to force divided by area, P equals F area. Let's take an example to make it easier to imagine. Suppose you have a piston A with a surface area of 0.001 square meters and a piston B with an area of 0.1 square meters. If we apply a force of 20 newtons to piston A, it will create a pressure of 20,000 Pa because the oil is almost incompressible and the pressure is transferred intact to piston B. So now the force acting on piston B will be equal to the pressure times the area, that is 20,000 x 0.1 equals to 1,000 newtons. Thus, a very small force acting on a small area has been amplified by the hydraulic system into a force 100 times larger on a much larger area. The level of amplification is equal to the area of piston B divided by piston A. That is the reason why a normal person can use a hydraulic jack to lift an entire car or sit in an excavator cabin, gently controlling it. It's very easy to shovel soil and rocks. This is also the reason why you can gently squeeze the brake handle or lightly step on the brake pedal to make the car stop. But like all other mechanical machines, the advantage of power is the loss of path. The trade-off is that you will have to apply force to piston over a very long distance just to get piston B to move a short distance. That's why you have to crank a lot to get a car off the ground. <laughs> To overcome this drawback, people will install an oil pump to do the cranking job for you. And that's basically how any hydraulic system works, including compressors that can destroy just about anything but a Nokia 3310. Oceans are giant water compressors. At an average ocean floor depth of 3 kilometers, water is compressed by about 1.5%. Even at the bottom of the Mariana Trench, a pressure of 1100 atmospheres can even compress water by up to 4% meaning the water volume is reduced to only about 96% of the volume at sea level. But that's the pressure of a water column 11,000 meters high, and just when you start thinking that compressing water is easy, in fact, people have been building countless machines to compress water. Those are water jet cutting machines. It is a hydraulic system, a dangerous water gun. When enormous pressure is applied to a microscopic nozzle, it releases a jet of water at tremendous speed and pressure. But water jet cutting machines do not cut completely with water jet, as many people mistakenly think. Water jet cutting is essentially a process in which water flows through stone and is accelerated millions of times. The supersonic pressure water jets created by the hydraulic system are guided through small super hard, super wear resistant nozzles often made from ruby or diamond. The pressure from this high speed, 
ultra-thin stream of water abrades the material, creating a sharp, sweet cut through it. However, for hard materials, water abrasion is not fast enough. Humans are a race that does not like waiting. That's why we mix abrasive materials into the water jet, usually silicon carbide, aluminum oxide, sand, and garnet chips. As the water jet exits the nozzle, its extreme pressure and speed create a vacuum in the surrounding area, drawing abrasive materials into the water stream. It's almost like when a container passes by and you feel drawn towards it. The water stream containing the abrasive material recedes at three times the speed of sound, about 1,000 to 100 meters per second. At this speed, you can make a round trip from east to west of the United States in just one hour. However, the cutting speed of a water jet cutting machine is not destructive. As mentioned, it is essentially just an accelerated abrasion process and so depends quite a bit on the hardness and thickness of the material. On average, a water jet cutting machine cuts 30 to 40 centimeters per minute. The average pressure of a modern water jet cutter is about 60,000 psi, which is nearly four times the pressure at the bottom of the Mariana Trench and enough to compress water by 11.5%. In particular, some water jet cutting machines can operate at a pressure of 100,000 psi, equivalent to the bottom of an ocean 70 kilometers deep or a pressure of 7 tons per square centimeter. At this pressure, water can be compressed up to 16%, but the pressure at which water is compressed only 16% is a big problem for metals. When subjected to repeated high pressure, the metal will weaken, also known as fatigue. When the metal gets tired, it will start to crack, turning the entire hydraulic system into a time bomb with no telling when it will start counting down and when it will explode. That's why most water jet cutting machines only operate at 60,000 psi pressure to ensure safety. Hopefully this video helps you understand a little more about the hydraulic system and its practical applications in life. If you find this video useful, remember to click the like button to let us know. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to become smarter every day. For now, goodbye and see you soon.